My name is Maurice Velasquez. And I'm John Shirk. And this is Winning in the Workplace. Powered by Team Real World. Welcome to Winning in the Workplace. Gordy Rush, John Shirk, Maurice Velasquez. Ooh, I nailed it. That, that was, was pretty good, man. I'll answer to that. Oh, God bless. <laughs> I feel like I can go to Caliente and order off the menu now. I'm rolling. <laughs> this is Winning in the Workplace. They're the best, in my opinion. Business consultants, team building, leadership, and I love our discussions each week. And Guys, we've been uh, on this series now talking a lot about uh, basically, again, getting the whole company to put out the stuff, getting them to communicate, how to be more efficient, as uh, more efficient, I should say, as a company. And then at that point, defining roles for people. Right. Once you get everybody on board and say, this is the direction we're going, your input matters. Here are the roles, and there are six roles, and let's recap those six roles. Sure. And sure. then we'll talk a little bit about whose responsibility is to make sure that people continue to stay between the lines of their defined roles. Correct. Sure. Uh, it begins with that executive layer, sometimes just one person, sometimes it's a whole group of people, and, and that group setting goals, stating outcomes that the organization should be accomplishing. And keep in mind, that means numbers. We're looking for some kind right. of numbers. We right. uh, Percentages, uh, amounts of revenue, but it, it, it something that can be measurable, so speak in terms of those type of outcomes. Exactly. Then the middle management team is supposed to organize. Now, mm-hmm. in this series and in our program, we will get more d- into exactly what does it mean to organize, but by and large, it, it, what has to come out of this role that the manager is, is a game plan mm-hmm. for them to organize everybody, themselves and their peers, and, and become much more collaborative with other departments. That's correct. And then that game plan goes down to the front line and implementation. Um, and and uh, what happens is what always happens when you begin to implement it, and that's problems happen. Yeah. The, 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 the role of the, of the front line is just to provide extremely good customer service. Mm-hmm. Now, that's always challenged, but that's their goal. That's their that that's their role, and uh, like John said, there's lots of problems to come up. So then the role of of the frontliners is to communicate those problems up, and this is where the quagmire starts. Right. Okay, this is where the whole thing starts to break down. If it hasn't broken down yet on the on, on issues going down, mm-hmm. then this is normally where it breaks up because oftentimes we work with clients and work with companies, and we ask them, so does anybody have a copy of the executive goals? Of the strategic plan, well, no one's come up with that. <laughs> okay, <laughs> then we say, all right, um, can we go to the meeting where the managers uh, do some peer alignment and get organized with each other and bring, you know, uh, get on the same page? Well, we don't have that. We don't have that. Okay, yeah. wow. Okay, good. Can we can we then talk about y'all's program for providing excellent customer service? And what's the last time you guys rolled a customer service program internally? Uh, <laughs> okay. Roro. Yeah, and, yeah. Drum, and then we go. So how many problems are you guys having? Yeah. <laughs> okay. And then the frontliners go, oh, oh I'll well, tell you about well, some problems. I'll tell, I'll tell you the problems. And yeah. what happens is we then ask the question, do you guys feel that you guys can, on a regular basis, bring problems up to your middle managers and tell them all that's being – you're being quagmired down there? And that's where they go, no. All right. Mm-hmm. So your role to bring problems up, how good are you guys at that? And they're like, man – we can't talk to those managers. You know? <laughs> and so that's where the breakdown happens. We'll cover it more in just detail, but yeah. that's the role. The role of the, of, the, of the frontliners is to be able to bring problems up. Okay. Yep. How do you get people, frontliners, everybody in the comp- company to give you the stuff, especially if the problems may involve another employee's performance, a la John Shirk? Okay. Sure. And for instance, sure. Yeah. John Shirk has made an error. Sure. I catch it. Right. And I know I got to get this fixed. Correct. But the only way that you get these fixed is account by account. And how do you get them to overcome what's best for the company sure. without souring possible uh, you know, a workplace mm-hmm. relationship? L- let me give you a very granular first step. I like granular. Granular first step. How do I make sure that my third baseman, okay, when he picks up the ball and throws it to the first baseman, that they're going to get good at that? And then when first base grabs the ball and throws it to third base, that they're go- how do I get them to throw stuff at each other and catch? Right? Mm-hmm. That's the question we're asking. Right. Mm-hmm. How do I get my frontliners to throw problems at middle managers and middle managers c- to catch? Well, here's the answer. In order to get first baseman and third baseman to do this together, they have to show up somewhere and practice. Yeah. 
Okay, yeah. you can't have the third baseman show up on Tuesday at four o'clock to practice, and your first baseman. Well, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. He had another meeting. <laughs> okay, and so the thing that we have to get these teams get the middle managers is first step. What's the first step? Have a meeting with your frontliners and show up, mm-hmm. and be ready to catch. And my role at that meeting is not to tell you why you're so wrong about everything you're seeing. My role at that meeting as a middle manager is for you guys to catch, so to throw. You throw, yeah. I catch. Mm-hmm. Talk, I write it on the board. Keep talking. What else are you seeing? What else are you seeing? Got gotcha. you. And just learn to do that first. Yeah. Then we'll figure out what to do with all that stuff. Right. But if we can't get managers in the same room with the frontliners and have a catching and and throwing session. Well, good luck with that. The, yeah. the, the frontliners, within weeks, they'll give up on the fact that, you know what, this is a joke. They're not here to listen to us. You know, I, I, there are times where, we, where, where it's really the case that the frontliner is the problem. But it's not most of the time. Occasionally, that's true, That's but a it's good not point, most John. of the time. It, it really isn't. Keep, it, it, yeah. Elaborate a little bit on well, that. Well, in particular, like a... Um, you know, when I when I was real young in management, I had uh, somebody that mentored me, and I, it was a situation where I had to let somebody go, and I didn't want to do it, and, and he came up and put his arm around me. He said, John, I only got two questions for you. Can he and will he? That's good. That's right. And I said, right. well, he can do it. I said, so you're telling me he won't? I said, I don't think so. He said, then he goes. And But, but the will he part is not... That's a, that's a that's rare. Mm-hmm. Usually, it's a tools issue. It's a training issue. It's a context issue. It's a no one's listened to me the last right. six months when I said I had these problems. Why should I care? Well, no one else cares. Well, yesterday, a client, uh, the owner, actually, he's a general manager. He called me and said, hey, uh, the, the manager of one of our departments is going to have a difficult conversation with an employee because they have some issues. Uh, should you be there, Maurice, or should I, I let them handle it by themselves? And I'm like, well, it hasn't gone really well by themselves, so I, I may have to show up, okay? And uh, and he said, Maurice, oh, why do you think they can't talk? Okay, I said, well, that's the whole issue, okay, is when they come together, one of them's probably not listening to the other. And I would venture to say, I told him this, I would venture to say that the three or four things that the manager is going to talk to the employee about of that he wants that employee to fix more probably three out of those four things. If you ask the employee, employee why he's behaving that way, mm-hmm. he'll come back and say, "Well," and he'll basically lob it back to the manager, and the manager will take a hands off approach as well, you know, and, and basically just say, "That's not my fault." Mm-hmm. And usually, what happens is that the manager is causing some type of consistencies or inconsistencies where the employees react. The manager sees that, they try to coach it, but the managers don't see that their role in the inconsistency is what often creates the behaviors that they want to then correct. The, yeah. the managers have to own it. Yeah. Okay? Uh, so let's keep going. Yep. All right, so let's keep going. Yep. So the managers, the, uh, Gordy, did I answer your question? About no, that? no, that was what's the, perfect. What, yeah. What's the first step? So, um, so the, the, um, the frontliners have to be able to speak up, okay? Yeah. And like we said, it's only going to happen if we have an agreement do we do this on Tuesdays at 3 o'clock? Great. Right. Okay. A, a little, a little cu- couple more thoughts on that. If I know that at Tuesdays at 3 o'clock we're going to have these discussions, I can just write down all my issues on a sticky note and focus on my clients. Right. Because I know next week at 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock on Tuesdays, I'm going to talk about this. But if I have nowhere to go with this stuff, guess what I want to talk about it? Now and in 10 minutes and 20 minutes and yeah. 30 minutes in the yeah. hallway, you know, and it becomes this, this quagmire. So, okay, the next step, the next role of the managers is to take all those issues and do what we call air traffic control. Mm-hmm. They got to figure out three things. Are these issues that I can then train my staff members and empower them to, to, to fix? Mm-hmm. Or is this something that I need to go talk to a peer, another department manager, and go talk with them because what they're doing in marketing is really messing us up. So it's kind of like I'm, I, I'll need to be an advocate to go talk to another peer. Right. Or right, the right. third direction, you know what? This is an issue I need to go talk to one of the executives about. Mm-hmm. So the middle manager, if the middle manager is is – at that point, doing their role of air traffic control and figuring out which direction the solution is, they should do a lot of walking around. They're either going to be an advocate upstairs, advocate across to their to their peers, or they have to go train their staff on how to fix that problem. Yeah, that's right. And that 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 air traffic control problem, uh, when it's getting solved, it leads then to that sixth role, which is the executives executing. Right. If if I'm a middle manager. And I know that some of the problems that came up to me, uh, you know what, I can't, I can't, this is not an employee issue. Mm-hmm. And you know what, this is not a marketing, it's not a claims issue, it's not an IT issue. I got to go talk to one of the executives. 
When I go up to that executive, I need to go present and propose, and I have to, quote, push that executive to give me a decision. Yep. If this sounds like your business, these guys can help you. Give them the info on how they get in touch with you, John Shirk. Uh, come to winningintheworkplace.com. Uh, it is our training site and the best place to get a hold of us. Uh, just a $35 subscription will give you more training and more empowerment than you know what to do and with. And great discounts for yeah. companies. Yes, absolutely. And and the great thing, you've got the $35 for the subscription, but you know you, you guys have a tailored approach. Oh, very oh, much yeah. so. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah right. On the website, they'll find a lot of really good material, a lot of free stuff, great videos, a lot of training. The subscription provides them pretty much all of our tools. And then if they want something more tailored, give us a call and we can help them out with that. Winning in the Workplace is the website. Winning in the Workplace is the show. We'll be back with more. Winning in the Workplace is the most practical and results-driven training to increase your skills as a professional to manager and leader. So are you ready to win in your workplace? Visit www.winningintheworkplace.com. 